More ceremonies with significance, the sin offering, the guilt offering, or also called the trespass offering, and Jesus alleviates suffering spiritually and physically. Today on 3 in 1, as we look at Leviticus chapters 4 through 6 and Mark chapter 5. Well, how are you feeling today? Good? Not me. I'm pretty run down today, feeling kind of rotten. I thought I would just be honest about that, since this is something that we will have to deal with if we're going to be disciplined disciples. We're not always going to feel like getting up. We're not always going to feel like reading. We're not always going to feel super spiritual. Sometimes we're going to feel like a sad sack. Sometimes we're going to feel how I feel today. See, some of you may have noticed yesterday that there was an episode released early in the morning with a study on the first three chapters of Numbers, not Leviticus. I have no idea how that happened. Oh yeah, I do. I'm an idiot. And somehow on the way in to have my devotions and to write the study, I completely, somehow completely spaced that Leviticus came after Exodus. Nice, Pastor Dom. All the way through reading, all the way through writing, all the way through recording, even after publishing the podcast, I did not realize my mistake. And then the messages started flooding in. Hey, why are we skipping over Leviticus? Oh no, how embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as last week when my kids invited me to Bible Trivia Day at their school. And after I was introduced as Pastor Dom, I proceeded to miss all the answers as these ninja parents all around me were nailing everyone. Oh well, back to the drawing board. I sat down at my desk yesterday and I started studying Leviticus chapters 1 through 3 instead of Numbers chapters 1 through 3, reading, writing, recording, publishing the podcast once again. All that to say, did I feel like getting up this morning and getting into the office and getting back at it? No, no I didn't. No, I I didn't feel like it, but thankfully my faith is not held back by my feelings. My faith is founded on the fact that Jesus Christ died, laid down his life for a sad sack like me, because he loves me. See, I need the gospel that I preach just as much as you. A good friend reminded me about that recently. So no matter what's going on circumstantially in our hearts or in our lives, we still have the ability in Christ to set that aside for a time and seek Him. For often afterwards, after some time with Him and some time in His Word receiving from Him, He settles our soul and lifts our head and our silly problems don't seem so serious anymore in the light of eternity, in the light of His glory and His grace. Okay, on to what's before us today. Leviticus chapters 4 through (laughs) 6. Ceremony with Significance a system of sacrifices specifically designed to teach truth. Truth about the holiness of God. Truth about the wickedness and consequences of sin. Truth concerning the only way to God. Sacrifice. Truth concerning the only way to walk with God. Sanctification. A system of holy offerings. The burnt offering, the grain offering, the peace offering. We saw those in our last episode. The sin offering and the guilt offering, which we'll see today in this episode. Each of these offerings served a specific purpose. Each of these offerings taught a specific truth. Each of these offerings were a specific shadow of our Savior. They all point to Him, the Lamb of God to take away sin, especially the sin offering and the guilt offering, otherwise known as the trespass offering, an earthly process with a heavenly meaning. Puzzle pieces pointing to the Lamb of God that would one day take away the sin of the world, woven into the very fabric of their being, hoping that one day it would all explode with meaning, hearing that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. See, he is our sin offering. He is our guilt offering. He is our trespass offering. He himself offered up as a sacrifice for our, for my sin, for my transgression. He himself, his body, 
his soul offered for us as a sacrifice, a sinless sacrifice, for my sinfulness, for my guilt, for my shame. So in Leviticus, what were the particulars to these ceremonies? Well, we talked about the sin offering and the guilt offering today, sin offering. It was an offering for forgiveness of sin. It was an offering of atonement. It included a young bull, a goat, a lamb, a dove, a pigeon for the poor, or even flour for the very poor. The sinner would lay his hands on the head of the animal being offered as a symbolic transfer of sin to signify the substitutionary sacrifice as payment, as penalty, to communicate substitutionary atonement, to teach the truth of substitutionary atonement. Then there was the guilt offering, another offering of sin, forgiveness, atonement, usually a ram or a male lamb. Then there was the confession of sin, and then there was repentance and restitution, to communicate the necessity of repentance and restitution, to teach the necessity of repentance and restitution, even after there is substitutionary atonement. Can you see how God is teaching his people in big block letters, waxing on and waxing off like we talked about yesterday, learning through obedience, almost through osmosis, as these truths about sin, sacrifice, sanctification, repentance, and restitution are being woven into the very fabric of their being. See, God knew what he was doing in instituting these institutions, and we would do well paying attention to the particulars, the great lengths that God went to, the incredible detail that God gave in giving us the backstory of our redemption. We have no idea the soul-crushing responsibility living under the law. 613 commandments with an incredibly intricate system of sacrifices. We have no idea the relief, the elation, the explosion of joy that would come when one would realize that Jesus was the Lamb of God offered up once for all to completely fulfill the law, to do away with sin and sacrifice. Listen, but now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly await for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. So find the faith, find the courage, find the resolve to continue to read and receive from God through the book of Leviticus. No matter how you feel, For you are reading through the ancient path, the ancient past, the foundation of your faith in Jesus, the Lamb of God sent to save you. So now, before we transition to our New Testament reading, there is still Leviticus chapter 6, where we read of the different laws concerning the different offerings. Now, this is not a repetition of the first five chapters. It is the rules and regulations for the offerings from the priest's perspective, as they were the ones actually offering the offerings. Now pause for a moment and consider that in the new covenant, Jesus was not only the offering, not only the sacrifice, he is also the high priest that made the offering. Remember? Now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He, as high priest of the new covenant, offered the offering of himself to be slain for my sin, to be completely consumed upon the altar of God by the fiery wrath of God, the fiery wrath of God, the hatred for the sins that I have committed and will commit. Can you imagine offering yourself? And yet in faith, that is exactly what we are asked to do. Listen, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So here we are, standing at the edge of the altar, ready to throw ourselves in, to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, kind of like the burning bush, in Christ on fire, but never completely consumed. We need faith for this. We need faith for this offering. So God, please give us faith. Please help us to forsake our feelings and to follow you every day, all day, no matter what, no matter what we feel like. Okay, now, on to our New Testament reading for today, Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 5, we see Jesus alleviating suffering, spiritually and physically. Spiritually with the soul of a man being tormented by demons. Physically in the lives of a little girl and 
an older woman. Verse 1 of chapter 5 says, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Naked, violent, obsessed with death, satanic torment through and through, Now, we know from a parallel passage that as they were rowing to the other side of the sea, as it says in the first verse, they encountered a satanic storm, the wind and the waves whipped up by the prince of the power of the air. But one word from the prince of peace, and all was calm. Jesus calmed the satanic storm on the outside, on his way to calm the satanic storm for this maniacal man on the inside. This demon-possessed, naked, violent, obsessed with death man, who after one word from the Prince of Peace, was radically transformed from a maniac into a missionary. See, so grateful for the grace that he was shown, he wanted to go with Jesus. He begged to go with Jesus, but Jesus refused, having another plan for his life. Listen. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion upon you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Maybe you were like this maniacal man before the Prince of Peace spoke his word of peace into your heart and life and transformed you from the inside out and then sent you to testify of all the great things that he has done for you. Maybe you identify more with the woman or maybe with the little girl in this chapter, suffering for so long, and then the Prince of Peace comes along and alleviates that suffering. Either way, we understand that Jesus wants to and is able to alleviate suffering spiritually and physically. Ultimately, he wants to alleviate, rescue you from the suffering caused by sin. Sin in your past, in your present, in your future. His sacrifice, the sacrifice of himself is sufficient to do that. Do you believe that? Will you receive that by faith? The fact that the substitutionary sacrifice that Jesus offered on our behalf, as he offered himself, is sufficient sufficient not only to save us from all sin not only to cleanse us from all sin but also one day soon to rescue us from all the suffering caused by sin again listen but now once at the end of the ages he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and as it is appointed for men to die once but after this the judgment so christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation.